what is international jurisdiction? What is domestic and municipal and national jurisdiction? These are the jurisdictions where the courts have got pronouncement. The national courts have got authority or rather pronouncement of uh, national jurisdiction. The international courts and tribunals have got authority of uh, international jurisdiction. How about the universal jurisdiction? What is it? The universal jurisdiction simply means that an individual suspect or perpetrator of international crimes can be apprehended and prosecuted in foreign jurisdictions, in foreign domestic and national jurisdictions which are not his jurisdiction by virtue of his nationality. This is becoming uh, increasingly a practice in different countries and we can look at the United States of America arresting the son of the former president of Liberia, Charles Taylor. His son, Buki Taylor, was apprehended in the United States of America and prosecuted in accordance with the principle of the universal jurisdiction. So many cases of the suspects of terrorism have been prosecuted within the jurisdiction of the United States of America and that is in accordance with the principle of the universal jurisdiction. United Kingdom in 1998 at the request of the Spanish government arrested Augusta Pinochet, the former general and dictator of Chile at the age of 82 while undergoing his treatment in London. He was arrested and prosecuted. We have seen such similar cases in which the universal jurisdiction has been invoked in Spain. The Spanish government has prosecuted state officials from Guatemala, state officials from El Salvador, and state officials from Argentina in accordance with the universal jurisdiction principle. The same has been seen in Belgium when the Belgian government apprehended a Rwanda national who was indicted of having committed crimes during the genocide in Rwanda back in 1994. Fabien Setse was found guilty by the court of Brussels and sentenced. We have seen of the recent time the arrest of a Rwandan fugitive Felician Kabuga, who funded allegedly the genocide of Rwanda in 1994. He was arrested by French authority and handed over to the International Criminal Court for prosecution. We have seen the similar cases happening as well in the African region. The question of the former Liberian president, Charles Taylor, was arrested by Nigerian government and handed over to the International Criminal Court where he was prosecuted and found guilty. He was sentenced in, for 35 years in jail in the United Kingdom. Similar cases we find in Senegal 
when former Chadian president Hissen Habro was arrested and put through the judicial process by extraordinary court or special tribunal of Senegalese judges and some Belgian judges. He was found guilty and he was put in life imprisonment. There is also the case of Mr. Dominic Ongwen, who was at large but indicted by the International Criminal Court. Back in 2015, he was arrested in the Central African Republic and handed over to the ICC. Well, this is a big plus when it comes to the development in the international criminal justice. We learn so much from the concept of the universal jurisdiction, which also brings to our understanding another two concepts the criminal responsibility of the states to the international law or under their obligation to the international law, but also the protection of such criminal responsibility or liability at the international law. Well, as universal jurisdiction is still yet to be fully realized under treaty and or convention, it is already a practice as general principle of the international law by so many countries, almost over 123 states. This is a sign that uh, so far there is no safe haven for the suspects of the international crimes, that is crimes against humanity, crimes of war, war crimes, crimes of genocide, and crimes of torture. We find also the participation or involvement of organizations that have got international recognition or international legal personality. Amnesty International, just to name a few. Human Rights Watch, Transparency International, and many other international and intergovernmental organizations that work in collaboration to assist in seeing that international criminal justice is realized into its fullest. And in this case, the universal jurisdiction is systematically and increasingly gaining momentum in many domestic jurisdictions around the world. Peter here, University of Nairobi School of Law, Kisumu Campus. I expect to see you again. Put the thumb there, subscribe, and receive some of our recent presentations. Thank you and bye for now.